the chips will be very, in fact, they already are quite similar in many ways to, you know, an AMD or Pentium chip, except they have very low levels of integration, but other than that, they're fairly simple. The big difference is it, this all needs to be put in a very shielded, cold environment. And so when you, the actual chip is the size of, you know, this thumbnail, but the actual machine is about 10 by 10 by 10 of refrigeration. So the actual system right now is fairly significant in terms of footprint. But my point is, if you want to do the computation that we are capable of doing today, in the future, can we only do with quantum chips? Or we need a normal chip? Like oh no! You, these things you have you have to think of these things as accelerators. I mean, they're they're special purpose processors that do something very well. And so I think um, you know you, you got to think about these things as just this application specific coprocessor. It sits off in the corner somewhere. Uh, it's really good at certain things, but can't do anything else. That's the way to think about them, at least in the short term. Is that if you have some important problem like a, a machine learning thing and you offload it to this type of processor, it might be able to do something transformative and, and, and awesome, but you could never do even simple other things on it. Does, does the decoherence, is that, is that simply a physical aspect, you know, like one over R squared, where, you know, the, the neighboring magnetic fields, their, their potential to, to cause decoherence is, you know, proportional to 1 over R squared, the distance from the one that's being ruined, or is it some kind of other effect? It's, it's not no. that simple. Um, it's more like a complexity issue? No, it's 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 more like, um, imagine you have, you have two boats on the surface of a lake, okay? And there's a wave on the lake, and the two boats are going up and down at the same time, okay? So think of that as like coherence, everybody's happy in the quantum world. Now imagine you got like a beaver slapping its tail somewhere and creating ripples on, on the pond. So they, the, the, those ripper, ripples will start to move the boats out of phase a little bit. Now imagine the beaver is some source of noise on your chip. It's an electron which is hopping back and forth for some reason. Yeah, no, or, or like a little spin, magnetic spin is, is rotating or something. So you have this lake and there's a gazillion beavers all around the outside slapping their tails at the same time, and the boats start to jitter out of phase. So the time it takes for the boats to go out of phase is something like this decoherence time. So the more beavers you have and the harder they slap, the shorter time it takes for the thing to go completely lose its coherence. Okay. So but that- it, it's really the temperature just very, very local to the, to the quantum chips, or it's the temperature? No, it's, 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 every, it's every physical system that couples to the the quantum system that you care about. So in a, in a physical qubit, which has this magnetic nature, anything that's magnetic has this, say, dipolar coupling, it's one over R squared, to the, the flux that threads the chip. It's actually not one over R squared if you're too close to it, but there's some function of distance. And then you have capacitive coupling, so there's electrical coupling. If you have an electric thing that generates an electric field, there's, elect there's an electrical capacitive degree of freedom of the qubit too. So basically anything that if you were to write down the physics of the system, couples to the thing that you care about is a potential source of the, the wiggling. Okay, and last one, does making the, the, the qubits larger, does that diminish the impact of these influences? Is, is it related to size and bulk? So that, it's it? a very non-trivial question as to how the qubit size affects the noise. There are some theoretical models where when you increase the size of the qubit, the effect actually goes down and it has to do with a surface volume to volume to surface area argument. In practice, though, what we find is that the noise scales uh, linearly with the perimeter of the qubit. So the longer you make the line, the more the noise is. And what that's telling you is that there's a source of noise that sits under the wire or in close proximity to it. So that when you open, the, you increase the perimeter, the noise increases concomitant with your increase. Uh, and that can be seen in other labs around the world also. So there's something in the chip itself, in probably in the insulating layer, that's creating a noise source that is smallest when you can make the qubit as short as you can.